We start with breaking news tonight. Brand new information about the South Park fire. Stories of heroism and haunting what ifs. Good evening, I'm Erica Bryant. And I'm Scott Wickersham. In the past hour, Charlotte's Fire Department delivered its final report on the deadly fire to City Council. And only Channel 9's Joe Bruno has read all 96 pages of that report. He's here to break it down for us, Joe. It was one of the biggest fires in Charlotte's history. Two workers died. An entire city seemingly stood still when the Modera South Park apartment complex went up in flames. Tonight, for the first time, we have an official in-depth look at what happened on May 18th, 2023, and what Charlotte Fire is doing to make sure it isn't repeated. When it comes to fire, seconds make a world of difference. And a fire doubles in size every 90 seconds. So you, you do the math there, right? Nothing proves this more than the South Park fire. It was one of the darkest days in Charlotte history. The five alarm fire at this luxury apartment construction site killed two workers, Reuben Holmes and Demonte Sherrill. This report ordered by Chief Reginald Johnson and obtained by Channel 9 outlines what happened and as a result, what needs to change. This obviously was a very significant fire in Charlotte and a very complex, low frequency, high risk event. There's a lot of good stuff that went on and there's a few things that we can get better at. The report notes the complex was largely under construction. It was practically a vertical lumber yard. The first two floors were for parking. The remaining five stories were all uncompartmentalized wood framing. No sheetrock or barriers to prevent fire growth. On the ramp between the parking garage and second floor was a mobile trailer housing a generator and supplies for spray foam insulation. The report says a diesel engine inside that trailer suffered a catastrophic failure, resulting in combustible fluids contacting the hot surfaces of the engine. Vapors ignited. A small fire quickly spread to the nearby wood framing. The fire is officially classified as accidental. It was discovered by workers at 8.55 a.m. The report says they tried to put it out with portable fire extinguishers but failed. It wasn't until 9.02 seven minutes later that they called 911. At 907, Charlotte Fire arrived 12 minutes after workers first discovered the fire. If the 911 call was made right when the fire was discovered, could this have unfolded differently? I believe so. This fire was able to grow uh, exponentially uh, before our uh, firefighters even arrived on scene. And so we, we stress all the time to call 911 immediately when a fire is discovered just so that we can get there and probably catch it before it gets out of hand. If that call was made at 855 and you arrived by nine, what exactly do you think could have changed in this situation? At that point in time, we probably could have stretched our normal uh, hose lines, been able to coordinate water supply and get in there because the fire would not have extended into the structure at that point in time. It started in the trailer. There's a good chance we could have probably mitigated it a little bit earlier. If that call was made right away, do you think Mr. Holmes and Mr. Sherrill would be alive? That I can't guarantee, even though uh, we're, we're saying it's hypothetical. If we had gotten there at nine, at nine instead of uh, 907, there's a chance that we could have prevented that, but I can't say that uh, ultimately because we still don't know how much fire spread had, had occurred in that time period. The delays in battling the fire continued even after Charlotte fire arrived. The report says Engine 14 established a water supply on Barkley Downs and hooked into the fire department connection. They were told it was operational. It wasn't. Engine 12 also ran into issues when they took their hose bundles into the lower deck and stretched them to the standpipe, which also wasn't working. Well, having that misinformation did delay us even more in suppression efforts. Uh, initially when we first got on the scene. And does that come down to the developer not being prepared for this situation or was it just the building was so in its infancy stages of being constructed that at that point it wasn't ready? I believe that there were some some definite issues in reporting and time uh, and construction of this building without necessarily our fire prevention inspectors being engaged early and uh, that possibly could have been prevented if we had been notified earlier of this type of construction, vertical construction at that point in time, we could have noticed that, hey, there's one stairwell 
the, the standpipe is not functional, um, these type of things would have been handled by our inspectors. The report goes into great detail of how firefighters attempted to rescue Holmes and Cheryl. As the fire raged, Charlotte Fire Captain Mike Watts and two firefighters climbed construction scaffold and stairs. Captain Watts told investigators he heard someone yelling, help me. In the near pitch black conditions, they yelled back, banged tools, and tried to find the victims. But conditions deteriorated, oxygen started running low, and they were forced to turn around. They nearly didn't make it out. Conditions were so poor, the crew ended up in a dead end. As a last resort, they were planning to bail out of a hole in this image that Captain Watts made and lower themselves with rope, potentially having to fall two stories. Thankfully, they found the stairs and got to safety. He did an outstanding job uh, as a company officer being calm and thinking through those things. Another challenge during the fire, a crane operator trapped more than 200 feet in the air with smoke swirling. Chief Johnson says the man had four bottles of water and two soft drinks to keep him cool until help could reach him. But he is a true hero because he stayed when he could have crawled down early, could have climbed down early and escaped, but he stayed because he knew he could save more lives from that position. The report says the operator positioned his crane in the open air courtyard and was able to move several employees to safety. It also says he saw Holmes and Cheryl, that he placed the platform on the balcony, but that they never got in. Do you have any understanding why they did not use the crane to escape? The only thing I can speculate, to be honest with you, is uh, maybe the effects of CO or smoke. Uh, it does start to change your mental capacity at one point in time. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, I mean, that's just speculation, and I don't necessarily like speculating, but that could very well be part of that. Chief Johnson attributes the crane operator's survival to firefighters using water to keep the crane cool and prevent it from collapsing, a heroic effort that is a culmination of years of training. And it's in that training that he says lessons learned from this fire will be applied. We want to be prepared for that, make necessary changes uh, so that we'll be better prepared when it happens again. As expected, with a five alarm fire, there was confusion at times. Chief Johnson says he is determined his department will learn from this and will break down what's changing as a result of this report tonight at six. Scott. All right, Joe, thank